Hello and welcome to another uh, macroeconomics practice problem. So with this problem, we're going to work towards the LM curve. Uh, we have an equation that describes the money demand in this economy, and then we're also given the money supply and prices. We then derive real interest rates given different amounts, given different amounts of the money supply. We'll see that as money as the money supply increases, then real in interest rates decrease. So this is uh, something you know that uh, if you increase the money supply, real interest rates decrease. This is hopefully something that uh, we have an intuitive understanding of already. You know, if this central bank prints more money, they're able to uh, influence real interest rates um, and get them you know to decrease. Uh, we'll also discover that we can use these equations to calculate the money supply required to achieve particular real interest rates which hint hint is something that might be helpful if you're a central bank. So let's get started. Uh, suppose that we have a money demand equation uh, equal to this. So uh, M over P is equal to 1000 minus 100 R. Just to note notationally, this D right here uh, is a notational indication that it's money demand. It's not like an exponent raised to the D, which I think uh, some people find confusing. So this is just money demand is equal to 100 minus 100 R where R is the interest rate in percent, and the money supply M uh, is 1,000, and the price level P is 2. So uh, part A, graph the supply and demand for real money balances. So how do we solve part A? Um, well, we're told that the money supply is 1,000, and the price level is 2. So uh, we're going to call that you know, M sub 1 is 1,000, and P sub 1 is 2. Um, so what's the money supply equal to? The money supply is going to be equal to 1,000 divided by the price level, which is 500. So the real money supply is this 500. Next, we're going to get both of these two curves, uh, the money demand and money supply equations, onto one graph. So money supply is uh, at 500. So M over P, the money supply, is this vertical line at 500. Because no matter what the real interest rate is, you know, it could be at 10%, the real interest rate could be at zero, the money supply real money supply is still 500. And then we also need to get the money demand equation there. Remember, money demand was equal to this 1,000 minus 100 times the real interest rate. So if we were to graph that here, um, first off, um, what's this intersection over here? Um, this intersection over here is if the real interest rate is equal to zero. So if the real interest rate is equal to zero, then this term goes to zero, this whole thing goes to zero, and we have money demand of 1,000. Uh, and then what about this intersect up over here? Well, that's if uh, money demand were equal to zero. So if this thing were equal to zero, what's the real interest rate? Well, if you set this equal to zero and then solve for R, you'll get a real interest rate of R. Um, do these numbers perfectly reflect the real economy? Of course they don't, they're really simple, but uh, it gives you kind of a sense of what we're dealing with. So here we have money demand, here we have money supply. So part B asks, uh, what is the equilibrium interest rate? You know, if you remember from the diagram, I just kind of had a big question mark at this intersection here. So what is the equilibrium real interest rate? Well, we have a money supply equation of this, you know, it's just 500, and then the money demand equation of this. Um, so how do we find the uh, money supply? Uh, sorry, the equilibrium interest rate. Well, in order to find that, what we're going to do is set money supply equal to money demand and figure out the real interest rate associated with that. So money supply is 500, and then the money demand equation is this. So now we just solve for R. Um, simplifying things, I can just show you the whole work. You're perfectly capable of doing this. We find that the real interest rate is just 5%. So plugging that into our nice little graph, we have uh, the real interest rate of 5. Um, so that's that. Part C asks us to change, to tweak things in the model. So assume that the price level is fixed, so prices are still two. What happens to the equilibrium um, interest rate if the supply of money is raised from 1,000 to 1,200? So now money supply is this. So we have a new kind of uh, real money supply that the central bank sets, this M sub 2, which is equal to 1,200. So the real money supply is a 600, and then our money demand equation is the same. So how do we find then that equilibrium interest rate given that change? Well, you know, we set money supply equal to money demand. Um, so we set up this equation and now we just want to solve for R. So going through that um, little bit of work there, we find the new real interest rate of four. 
Um, so what does that look like? That looks like down here. Um, if you remember before, the money supply was this 500, and we had an equilibrium real interest rate or interest rate of five. Now, given the shift out in the money supply, we now have a lower real interest rate of four. So moving on to part D, um, if the Fed or you know the central bank wishes to raise the interest rate to 7%, what money supply should it set? So the central bank desires a real interest rate of seven. Um, before we were given money supplies and we were then asked to calculate the um, interest rate, now we need to go the other direction. So what we need to remember, if the same rule applies. We set money demand equal to money supply, right? So here's our money demand equation. And then here's what we've had to stand in for money supply. So some quantity of money divided by prices. So we know what the price level is. The price level is two. Um, and we know what we want the real interest rate to be. We want it to be seven. So now all we have to do is solve for this M, the money supply. Um, once again, a notational note, this S exponent, uh, same thing with the D exponent, is just a notational note that this is money supply, this is money demand. It's D isn't a number, S isn't a number that we're going to raise things to, so don't worry about that. It's just notation. Um, I feel it should be a subscript, but okay, anyway. So simplifying things a little bit, we find that M over 2 is equal to 300. You know, that's just 1,000 minus 700. And then solving for M, we find that in order to get the real interest rate uh, to 7%, we need to set the money supply equal to 600. So um, we can conclude that if the Fed would need to set the money supply equal to 600, uh, would need to set the money supply equal to 600 in order to get their interest rates, real interest rates, yeah, real interest rates equal to seven. Um, so this should be kind of a clear hint, you know, at this stage in intermediate macro, we're trying to give you a clue that, you know, the central bank has some influence over one particular variable, the money supply. And it's perhaps possible that they could influence the uh, real interest rate uh, by manipulating that money supply. So, good to know. Um, hopefully that was helpful. Thanks and have a good day.